perfume mixed with barbecue in June was the smell of love in my home. I believe in you and there ain't nothing you can do was the soundtrack of my life. And, you know, we were talking earlier on the opening about, you know, being shy or something mm. like that. And the good thing I feel about storytelling would be you're, you're performing, but you're not performing. You know, we all know how to tell a story. That's right. We all have nieces, nephews, children around right. us. You know, we all know how to tell a story. And yes. if you're looking at it from that perspective, it makes it a little less scary, but Absolutely. you're still getting a wonderful message across. Um, you said two things when when you were talking a little while ago that make me so happy that you're here. Like, I'm happy that you're here anyway. <laughs> but it's the way that our guests do this. It's the way that our guests blend. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you were talking about was the history of storytelling. Yes. We have a, a family member who comes on. His name is Willis Phelps. Do you know Mr. Phelps? I don't. Mr. Phelps every year sets up at the August Quarterly I and he tells him. a story as a as a Buffalo soldier. Powerful. And he's dressed as a soldier mm -hmm. and he narrative. does, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. and he does, um, I don't even know what it's called, but he does things with fire and tools and he makes... Oh, yes, I do know him. You know him? Yeah, I just met him at the <laughs> newborn uh, the Pow, 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 Pow Festival. Yes. I just met him. Yes. Yes. Yes, so I Mr. Fe him. is a oh, wonderful storyteller. Story oh exactly, gosh, yes. exactly. Yes, and he made me a little a hook nail thing. or yes. something. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? Yes. And you remember. Yes. You remember. Yes. And then I see these children standing around him as he's dressed as a soldier, and they're just in that moment. And you see, I'm going to start crying. Uh, transported. I'm transported. sorry. I know me. Let me get it together. They they're transported. They're yes. just and they're they're and then that one spark. And then they want to know more. Yes. And then the second thing you said was about the masks. Mm. Dr. Donald Morton wrote a wonderful, wonderful book on wearing masks and mm. how we, we do it whether we know we're doing it or not. Really? Yeah, okay, yeah, that. yeah. I, I have it. Okay. Okay. I gotta make sure. So I'll send it, it to you yes, after please. this. But um, yeah. it was just, you know, the way when you said that, I'm like, wow, she does belong with us. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you stay so you understand, like, storytelling is not, not reading a book. Because so one, one uh, adult came um, yesterday and they thought, so you're going to be reading to them? Because when you hear storytelling, people get all kinds of right images in their hair. They think, you know, rocking chair mm -hmm. with a book, reading. So it's not. It's all committed to memory, like you just right. described. Um, it's Dr. Phelps. Mr. Phelps. Mr. Phelps. Mr. Phelps. Yep. Um, it's, it's from memory. And you're transporting them with your words and getting them to have imagery in their mind. Exactly. And it's used in so many parts of uh, various cultures, um, especially in the African um, diaspora throughout, whether it's in the continent of Africa or here or in the Caribbean. And we use it. We use it in our places of worship, right? Mm -hmm. To inspire, um, to educate, you know, uh, about religious script. So that's how we communicate. That's how we remember. That's how things um, sort of settle in, and become a part of us just through story. Exactly. So let me ask this mm -hmm. question. I, I have a story, oh. and a lot of times I'm talking to youth about my story. But it seems like the storytelling that I'm talking about is different from what you're talking. And I'm not talking when you just described about the rock and cheer reading right. out of the book. I understand all of that. Okay. But it seems like this is it's a difference. Is it? Is it? Hmm. So you mean when you share your story with young people on a one on one basis, you think that's different than what Well it, it'll be a group. So oh, I let them know group. this okay. is what happened to me, this is my story, this is how I did this and that and tell them some of the, the sad times, the hard mm -hmm. time. I'm telling them a story but some kind of way I'm wondering if your storytelling is different from mm -hmm. What I do, even though each individual is different. Right, I would say everybody brings to it their own thing. Um, and I think that fundamentally, like a story has, and this sounds basic, but a beginning, middle, and end. That sounds basic, but some people, what, is, what it is not is um, when you're sharing just renderings that are not connected or vignettes, you know, or this is what happened with me today, or a list of activities, that's not storytelling, right? That's a, a narration of sorts, but that's not storytelling. Yeah. A storytelling has a beginning, middle, and end. There's a climax, there's a purpose, there's a reason for it. And it sounds like there's a reason for you uh, sharing. Absolutely. You're not just sharing because you um, just want to pour your heart out about what happened to you. I would, I would dare to guess that you're sharing because you want them to learn from your story. Exactly right yes. inspire them to maybe do things differently mm -hmm. or to, and to give them hope mm -hmm. right that's storytelling that's storytelling it's funny because um, I ha I used to have a very long commute to work mm 
-hmm. And I, at the time, had discovered like three different storytelling podcasts. Okay, oh, okay. the Moth. Oh yeah. Yeah, a couple so, of so others. That's the first person. Right. Narrative. Exactly. Mm -hmm. A first mm -hmm. a recollection about my story, or right. a, a person's story, rather right. than a historical story. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, what Dwayne is saying, I felt it's like, I feel like I have a story, right? Mm -hmm but my story is boring to me. Mm. And then as I'm listening to these stories being told, I could see what you're talking about, how there's pieces mm -hmm. and how it seems to be not necessarily neatly, but definitely tied mm -hmm. at the end. Deliberately, right? It's tied at the end, mm -hmm. you know, deliberately. Right. And so then I started practicing in my oh, head. Really? Oh, really? <laughs> I started. Okay. I, I have, Maybe you're ready to do a TED talk, maybe. a TEDx I, 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 talk. I don't know. Hey. See, everyone watching who's watched our, our program knows how close I am to my father. Mm -hmm. And every story I have that I practiced deals with my father but I'm like okay, okay well you could tell 14 little vignettes about your father that's mm -hmm. not a story right but then as I started piecing it together I'm like there's a tale here because okay. it wasn't always neat okay. and you need to tell how it came from this to this and there's an arc you know ah, yeah there it is that arc <laughs> the arc so if the arc is not there is not a story so in that arc what happens in that arc it either the characters in that story are trying to achieve something or they're trying to overcome an obstacle, and there's something, some force against that. Sometimes the force is within, right? Mm -hmm. um, depends. But that arc is the critical part of the story, and it's very important. And sometimes people get so caught up into, oh, I got the limelight, and I'm telling this, and I want to keep their attention, and they go, and they ramble here, and they ramble there, and they tangent here, and they tangent there, and the tangent continues, and you're thinking, what was the point? Right. <laughs> you know, what was the point? You know, what was the point? So as long as you got that arc, that conflict that gets resolved. In some stories, the conflict doesn't get resolved. They, sometimes they're called dilemma tales, and that is for the audience to fill in the blank at the end. That's a, that's a different type mm -hmm. of story, but it doesn't get resolved. But it's clear that you are inviting the audience to complete and give resolution to the conflict. So um, you mentioned that you have a daughter. Yeah. I'm curious, is she a storyteller? She is an amazing storyteller and is not at all interested in being a storyteller. <laughs> she is so easy for her and she's so incredibly talented. Uh, she's a graduate of Drexel University in, in their communication um, department <laughs> focused on public relations. And she, I mean, I say it comes easy, even when she was little, it comes super easy to her and it's just, it's not, does not interest her. But she's now, she's 24 years old. Her name is Imani Dorsey. And she's actually, she, she's always wanted to travel the world. And right now she's in South Korea. Wow. wow. Spending a year um, there teaching English because she wanted, she wanted to see the world. She's just definitely a citizen of the world. I bet yeah. that storytelling is happening over there too, whether she knows oh, yeah. it. she knows Oh, yeah, yeah it's probably. Nice, you know, and, and it's, so, it's so interesting. Um, people's um, culture and how stories are told. She talks about how um, people are very, poli very polite. But even and when she's, let's say she experienced in um, racism, right? It's polite, yeah. You know, so yeah. that's very interesting, right? So she's telling the story, and um, but then it's also very safe there to be very, very honest. I feel more at peace as a parent with her in South Korea than I, I, I felt when she was here mm -hmm. in, in Delaware. To be very, very honest, and it's safe there. So when she says to me, "Oh, my mom was on a train and I fell asleep." <laughs> Um, and it trained <laughs> at the last stop, and I'm like, I, I, I can't speak. And she says, okay, mom, uh, mom, remember, I'm in South Korea, I'm not, I've got, I'm not in Wilmington, I'm not in Philly. You know, she said, I said, so what happened? She said, of, co of course, that's what she says, of course, someone woke me up <laughs> of and course. said, of course, in South Korea, um, you're at the last stop, let me walk you to the next station. <laughs> and she lost all of her identification, all, her passport, her money, everything all of it and she's telling me the story and I'm thinking I can't breathe <laughs> what happened and, and it was no problem there's cameras everywhere they found in 30 minutes everything was returned. oh my goodness really everything was returned South Korea wow so you so don't know what the world is like right we kind of here and we think the world is this hard place and it, and, and, it, and it is not traveling yeah. exposes you to a lot it does because mm -hmm. I travel countries I haven't never been to an island vacation mm -hmm. I've already went to countries and mm -hmm. when I come back and talk to the kids one of my stories is 
the food tastes different because it's cooked different, the grains or whatever they're feeding right. it, the, right. the, the animals there. Mm -hmm. The euros compared to the American dollars, the difference in the currencies. Mm -hmm. And you have to learn, you, I keep saying academics because Come it covers on, everything for when you travel. And the last thing, as you see with your daughter, you don't know what these places are like other than what the news gives right. you. And it's not right. always and, the truth, right? And they're, they're, they're disguised a little bit of everything just to get you here, there, mm -hmm. you know, so. Or to keep you here. Right. Yeah. Right. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. I got a chance to, to travel to Ghana. I was invited to perform and, and as part of a delegation with the National Association of Black Storytellers. And it was, it's changed every cell in my body. Every cell. Can you tell more about that story? Because that's one yes. of the stories you told on WHYY. Yes, yes. And um, um, it was, first yes, program. Yes. Yeah, it was an extraordinary opportunity to go to represent the National Association of Black Storytellers. And so I was going professionally. I was going, to, you know, to do my job, you know. But also I had this personal um, mission as well. I had, um, my father made transition in 1989. And as a part of our family, he had traveled a lot and he went to Ghana and um, met a young man named Justice Ayukub, and he a year later came to America and lived with my father and was a part of our family. He was the one, he was the godson to my, my father, godbrother to me, and was the one there when my father took his last breath, like he made it to the um, hospital before we did, very close, very close. But we lost touch after my father passed, and when I got this opportunity to go to Ghana, I thought, wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be amazing if I connected with Justice? Now, I don't even know with he, whether he was in Ghana or not. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And it's a big country. It's a big country. I said, wouldn't it be nice? And I actually heard my father say very clearly to me, it's going to be easy, easy, easy. And I doubted that all the way. I doubted that I would make it. I doubted that I would raise enough money to go. I doubted it all the way through. And even when I was there, I thought, wouldn't it be amazing if I saw him and I heard my father say it's going to be easy 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 and extraordinarily it happened I happened to stay at a place called One Africa and Mama Amicus and she's an American who's been living in, in Ghana for t over 20 years and she happened to hear me sit, tell this story to somebody else. I was asking everybody, cab drivers, to, to a <laughs> showing guy. a picture. Right, right showing a picture. <laughs> Listen, it's like asking somebody coming to Wilmington and, and saying, Do you know anybody named Dwayne? Like, <laughs> Girl, we know a lot of Dwayne's. <laughs> like, are you kidding? And I just, she, she happened to hear me and said, Hold on a minute. And picked up the phone and, and looked in her, her phone for a justice and called somebody who called somebody. And within 24 hours, I have been reunited with my my god brother for after wow. 27 that's years that's amazing wow. that's after 27 years. i wanted you to tell that story when because i uh -huh, they, so uh, on, 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 and i should have got that clip because you have a picture of justice in yes. that clip yes. and i can just imagine me going to nairobi and saying have you seen this person do you know this what? person you know people are really looking exactly at you, like, <laughs> girl <laughs> you know it's not an unusual name you know but it, it we reunited now we're back and our family is whole again and um, he has a daughter and son here in the States, and I, I reunited with them and his ex-wife, and it's just been extraordinary, and we talk often. And it's, it's, it was easy, 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 and at the same time, I really pinched myself. Even now, I'm shaking because it's like it really happened. Yeah. It really happened. Well, Amazing. we only have about five minutes left, and I want to read the announcement to make yes. sure everyone knows how to yes. participate in the workshop. Yes. And then I also want to play us out with your TED Talk. Oh, wonderful. Okay. So, um, Everyone, the Inspirational Storytelling and Spoken Word Project is a six-week workshop. For more information, you can call, oh, I don't have the phone number on 302-995-7661. So we will have this segment uploaded tonight. I'll make sure to get Wonderful. it uploaded tonight. Oh, wow, that would be great. So then you can share it, and we'll yes. have that on our Facebook page. So you'll have all the contact information, and it's sponsored by the Delaware Division of the Arts, and it's uh, from the 25th, which was yesterday until April 1st, and it's free. It's for you know, youngsters, young people, ages 8 to 18. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out. Yeah. So, Tahira, thank uh, you thank so you. much. It thank was really you. a pleasure meeting you. Thank you so much. This is awesome. And um, I'll see you Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Yay, yay. <laughs> and we are going to ask you to stay tuned for the Congo Hour and continue watching. We're going to play a little bit of the TED Talk that Tahira gave. TEDx. TEDx, mm -hmm. yes, that, that Tahira gave. And we're going to ask you guys to have a wonderful and safe week.
So on behalf of myself and Dwayne, good night, everyone. Thanks night, for everyone. watching. What determines a life well lived? What's the barometer of a legacy? I contend that your legacy is a book that you write that you never get to read. I want to tell you a story now about a woman who thought she had no legacy to live at all. She and I talked about everything. I mean absolutely everything, from the small, mundane, daily things of life to the very large, complicated things of life. One of our favorite topics, motherhood. The joys and challenges of motherhood. And I remember over and over again, she would tell me that 90% of the things I was worried about was because I only had one child. She had seven. We talked about everything, but the conversation that sticks in my mind this day and every day since then is a conversation we had about what kind of a legacy she was going to leave behind. So she was comparing herself to me, and she said that she felt that because I was doing what I loved as a storyteller, I was shaping and molding a legacy that would last for many years after me, and in a legacy that had value. And she then remarked, I don't have anything I'm leaving behind. I don't have a legacy. Now, this shocked me. So then I went about convincing her. So I mentioned that she spent 37 years with the city of Philadelphia Department of Public Health. And under her management, there were scores of women who she mentored. There were scores of women who she encouraged to go back to school and get their GED. There was another woman who she encouraged to go pursue her academic pursuits all the way to a master's program. And I've seen the cards that they sent her, the gifts that they sent her. I said, there you go. That's proof that you are leaving a legacy. And to that, she replied, that's just a job.